This video is sponsored by you guys. I wanted to say a massive thank you for your continued support over on the Patreon. I normally put your guys' names up on the screen at the end of the video, but here at the beginning of Season 5, I wanted to give you guys front and centre place to say again a massive thank you for your continued support over on Patreon during these uh, frustrating and difficult times during the COVID-19 pandemic. Your support is making a real difference here on the YouTube channel, and I can't thank you enough for uh, for going the extra mile. Thank you very much indeed. Right then, let's crack on with season five. Welcome to season five of the Career Mode RTG with Cambridge United. We have new kits as ever, thanks to Merikit. We have a new stadium. We are playing at the new Abbey. Thank you for all of your suggestions. Uh, I didn't go for the East Point Arena because that's where we used or uh, well, that's where we were for the entirety of the lead save. Uh, there was one other suggestion that was very popular, which was Sanderson Park. I don't like the shadows at Sanderson Park. That was the only issue I had with that ground. So I took one of the other popular options, which was the Valstadion. So we have a new ground. We're going to be playing at the Valstadion for the remainder of the save. And uh, it's been renamed in-game as well as the new Abbey because of course Cambridge United Stadium in real life is the Abbey Stadium so we're now playing at the new Abbey Stadium uh, and we'll be progressing forward today by beginning season five now that's the new home kit I'll be able to show you the uh, the rest of the kits in a moment I want to run you through what my plans are for this uh, for this opening transfer window in the fifth season because uh, I'm able to fill some of the positions that I was looking to fill with some uh, free agents. Uh, I have redone all of my training regimes. So we have five new training regimes. Defenders, Jack Rolls and Schofield. Wingers, Charlie Robinson and uh, Clark again. And then my strikers. I am going to be adding more because of the free agents that are going to become available and we are going to sign. I saved the save so to speak when I loaded the save here and to avoid what's happened in previous series I went through in previous years we've gone to the free agents we've gone to scout all of the players that we think might be decent and then had a look at them but by which point they'd all signed for someone else so what I done is go through the free agents pick out all the ones I felt like I could be decent saved advanced two months so I've got the scout reports back seen who's good and who's not then gone back to the original save where we are now and i've only got the players left on my uh hub here that are actually any good and worth signing so i am going to get the chance to sign these guys before they sign for someone else i'll leave a picture up on screen i gyatsoed uh their overalls so you can see them uh, and what they look like before they arrive and rather obviously um palomino is the the go-to. We are looking for multiple central midfielders. So I'll cut back here now. And you can see that he does have one star skill move. So we'll boost that to three with the live editor. High, high work rates. Left footed. He's five foot ten. So he's not tiny. Strength isn't amazing. But, you know, he looks like he's going to be really, really, really capable for us in the midfield. And a great addition. The only issue I have at the minute is that... Obviously, we're playing roles in the forward cam role, so he'd be playing in the deeper role. But his tackling isn't that good. So I'm looking to train his tackling, or will look to train his tackling. There's also Clement Tate. Already has three-star skills and a five-star week. But he's six foot five. Low, low work rates. I don't know as I've ever used a low, low work rate player, so I'm not sure how he'll play. Physically, he's okay. Technically, he's pretty good. So he's... Lower rated than Palomino, obviously only in the mid-60s, but going to be a good addition to the team and will grow with training. Now, we were looking for a backup left-back as well, and Grant Sweeney is a positive option. Three-star skills, five-star weak foot on him as well. Six-foot-four at left-back. Decent physicals, pretty okay technically as well, and obviously with him having to fill a backup position, he's going to be great for us too to be understudy to... Uh, w Wilson, who's still my starting left back there. So we are still continuing continuing to look to move on Lewis Page. That will hopefully happen in this window. We're going to move on uh, Julian and Goy as well. I'm absolutely certain that that is going to happen because Okereke is going to join us. So I'm going to add Julian and Goy to the transfer list. Still got Ojo, uh, etc. at the uh, club at the minute because I haven't advanced past day one here. 
at the beginning of season five. So I'm going to go and get these three pre-contract, not pre-contract, these three free agents right off the bat. And our squad is going to look really, really good by the time we get these done and then hopefully add to it with your suggestions. Now, don't leave your suggestions just yet because we're going to advance not all the way through August, but part way through and we'll find out at the end of or at least part way through this uh, month what the positions are that we're looking for and how much money we have to spend which will dictate you know the caliber of player that we're able to go for so hold off on your suggestions for now but let's get these done here and i reckon i could have signed him for about 11 grand so i'll offer him 10 recommended wage is five and a half but tying him down for four years at 10 grand is fine i don't mind that uh, we've slightly paid in more than the recommended wage we've had situations before where we've offered the recommended wage and they've just turned it down valued at 11 million offering him 10 grand is perfectly acceptable i think and then this guy we should be able to offer uh, about three and we should be able to guarantee that he signs as well uh at left back uh it'll be a sporadic role for him actually and they will accept that which is fantastic news now then as long a deal as possible hopefully Five, they tend not to accept. So, oh, no, I don't want to propose a release clause. Disregard the release clause. They're going to give me an idea what they want wage wise. No, I'll just straight up offer him three grand. We have, as you can see, top left, about 17 million to spend currently. But that's prior to, as we progress a day, Conse Sao leaving and George Maris leaving. And of course, with the sale of Julian and Goy to come, hopefully a couple of goalkeepers too, we will have a really handy, sizable. A chunk of wedge to be able to spend in this window uh, again sporadic that suits me down to the ground i'm hoping that uh, he'll be able to grow quite well this young cdm and then over the course of the next two seasons become a really capable squad player for us again we'll offer him just three grand a week and they should accept that straight off the bat oh 2.6 that's fine I'm, i don't want to spend two months you know, half the video negotiating contract terms. That's why I offered slightly more just to make sure that they go through. So we've got those three guys in now, which is great. Now I'm going to go and add them to the training regime and then I'll cut back to you when we've advanced further forward. We've got Okareke in. I'll show you all of the kits as well. When we get to that first friendly, there's about 4 million to be earned from the preseason tournament as well. And then we can know exactly what we need in what position and of course, how much money we've got to spend to bring those players in. Had a transfer come in for Tom Knowles on the way to that first friendly. And I'm just going to accept that off the bat. We're going to look to move him on. I'll show you quickly, actually, whilst I'm back with you, what my shortlist or transfer list looks like. So we're looking to sell Knowles now as well. Burton, Norris, Page, who's valued at 11 and a half million. Leon Davies and Julian and Goy. So we are going to have a really, really healthy budget to be able to go in and sign some new players. Okareke is in and he's grown to 80 rated in this save already. So easily our best player. And with him up top alongside Adebiejo. So I'll put Adebiejo on the left. And with Abadia as an impact striker. We really should be challenging for promotion this year. The side isn't as strong as it potentially could be. But I really want to give these youngsters now the chance to to get a lot of first team football. We concentrated on loan deals quite a bit previously, and I wanna lean away from that now and give the players that we've got at the club, the RRs, the chance to play every week. So we might be slightly weaker or slightly lower rated overall in other positions, but I do think we'll still be able to get ourselves up. I may look for another winger, but at this moment in time, I'm not planning on looking for another winger. I would like a central midfielder that's defensive-minded. Defense-minded central midfielder. Because I mean, I've got Rolls, Palomino, and Tate. Tate is my defense-minded central midfielder, but he's not quite good enough yet. So I'd have Rolls, a defense-minded uh, central midfielder there, with Palomino and Tate on the bench, with then Palomino and Tate in my rotation 11. Then we'd have four really good central midfielders. And... Outside of that, I'm pretty happy with the side, to be honest, as we head towards this first friendly. So with regards to your suggestions at present, I'm saying uh, central midfielder. But hold off again, or hold off still, because the budget has been boosted slightly, as you can see here now. But with the sales of 
uh, Ngoy and... Uh, actually, let me show you the, the kits. With the sales of Ngoy and Paige, um, we're going to have a really decent budget. So we won't, we still won't sign someone too far out of the realms of a possibility, but we'll have a decent budget to afford someone that's pretty good. So you can see here, that's the new home kit. We've kept the same away kit as last year, so I barely used it last year. And then this year's third kit is of similar nature to uh, last year's away. But again, in the black. So we've used, in the past three seasons, three of the four sets of kits that were on the previous vote. I've asked Mera Kits to make me another set of four so that you guys will have the opportunity to vote for the kits that we use over the next few seasons. I basically went with the most popular, then the next season, the kits that came second, then the next season, the kits that came third. So we'll do that again over the next three seasons and you guys will have the chance to vote on uh, what kits you'd like me to use for season six and onwards, you know, when we're nearer the time and once Merikits has been able to get me uh, some uh, some kit designs for you. So that's what's going to happen. Okareke with his first goal in a Cambridge United shirt after 20 minutes on his unofficial debut and a brace as well to give us a 2-0 lead here against FC Copenhagen. And hopefully we should be able to run out winners here. Now this should be... The best pre-season tournament we've had so far in the save. I don't recall Clark adding a third there. I don't recall actually making it out of the uh, group stage previously in this save. A loan offer for Abadir, which will turn down, obviously. And a loan bid for Paige from Zulta Varigan. But we'll re reject that because I want to sell Paige. I don't want to loan Paige out. Basically, we got really lucky with those uh, pre or free agents that... They were in positions we were looking for, and they were of a decent nature as well, both stat-wise and hopefully potential-wise as well. So, very, very lucky. And we are going to need to buy... To stop bidding for my players on loan. Buy them, please. We won't need to buy more than one or two players throughout the course of this entire season, I hope. We can, of course, uh, adjust that when we get to uh, January, if we feel like we need a signing or two. But I'm looking for just, the, I think, just the one signing now. Because we've already bought three pre, uh, free agents in. I keep wanting to say pre-contracts just because I, I only paid uh, contracts for them. But the free agents that have come in, obviously, we are selling a number of players as well. So, or the plan is to sell them, provided we can get transfer bids for them. So, we're not going to have a massive amount of players again. We've actually lost that to Alanya Spore there in the last few minutes, which is frustrating. Knowles is sold. He's gone. A loan bid for Ngoy again. No, thank you. Buy him. And Leon Davis has pulled his squad and he's out for two weeks. That's not too much of an issue because he's not going to be playing and we're going to be selling him on sooner rather than later. One thing I do need to do actually is add left mid to Ethan Clark's position range, which I haven't done yet. Uh, I just straight up forgot to do that. But as you guys quite rightly pointed out, he has a five-star weak foot, so he's perfectly suited to playing on the left-hand side. So we will do that. In fact, let me go and do that now so that it's in effect and I don't forget in the future. And then I'll cut back to you again when there's more transfer business to attend to. In the third friendly now against Cadiz, hoping to get, well, a, a point wouldn't be enough, I don't think. I think we do need the win to go through to the knockout stages of this pre-season tournament. Hopefully we can sneak a 1-0 lead. In the final 20 minutes, they've had a man sent off. In the same minute that they scored the goal to go 1-0 up, it is. So actually, all oh, rolls equalises in the 90th minute. We might have just squeaked it. We didn't squeak it. We went out. <laughs> Not to worry. Where did... Who came above us? And Alanya brought... Ah, oh, Fez. All right, no worries. Well, out of the pre-season tournament again at an, at an early stage. We still have a, a decent... Healthy budget, 23 million. Still waiting for transfer bids to come in for other players as well. So we shall continue to progress towards... Why are they only loaning for my players? It's really frustrating me now. He's available to buy, lads. To buy. Oi, oi, oi. A transfer offer, but it's for a player that's not on the transfer list. Not to worry. We shall keep going. Oi, 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 oi. Right, hopefully we can get something done sale-wise before the game against... Uh, is it Leeds we've got on the opening day? I think it might be Leeds. I can't recall, actually. I'll have a look at the calendar. I won't 
play... Well, I think what I'll do is I'll play the first two games of the season in this episode. Is it Leeds? It is. We've got Leeds and then Bournemouth. I'll play Leeds, I'll play Bournemouth, and then we'll sim Grimsby and go to the Blackburn game. And then that will do us for today's episode with regards to the on-field action, but we might not yet be done with the off-field action, although we are still waiting for transfer bids to come in. Albeit, apparently nobody's got any money and they only want to loan players. <laughs> really frustrating. Hopefully some transfer bids come in sooner rather than later. Another loan bid this time for Harvey Nibs. Yeah, everybody's run out of money, apparently. It can't, can only afford to pay people's wages. Can't afford to actually pay any sort of transfer fee. Right, we've reached the first game of the season away from home against Leeds. I did get a loan bid in for Charlie Robinson, which initially I just rejected. But thinking about it, maybe we should let Robinson go out on loan for a year, get some first team experience, regular football, and then come back to us. Let me know in the comment section about what we should do with Charlie Robinson. We might, in that case, look to loan a winger to fill that gap and then Charlie Robinson can come back hopefully higher rated than he would have been if he'd stayed here at the club for the full season and not played much first team football or not as much as he would get out on loan let me know so into the first game of the season then away from home against Leeds United which was our last game of last season which we just snuck a 1-0 win from through a Jack Rolls penalty so it will be Akareke's First team full debut, as well as Palomino's as well. Let's see what we can do against Leeds again. A win, hopefully. This might be actually a very good sign of what the side's going to be like without those loan signings. Because this is literally the exact same game that we played at the end of the last season. Leeds is 11 then. Capriel up between the sticks for them again. Alioski drops back to left back again. Jamie Shackleton is back at Leeds United after his loan spell in Bristol City, I think it was, wasn't it, last season? And into their starting lineup in the centre of midfield. Rui Diaz up top for them. I know I'm looking for a central midfielder, and I know Jamie Shackleton's name will come up a lot, but I shall say it now I won't sign Jamie Shackleton in this save. He's the hero of the lead save. We want new heroes for this save, please. So I won't be signing Jamie Shackleton in this save. Maybe in FIFA 21 we can look to him as in, a, in a save, but in FIFA 20 for now, we won't be signing uh, Jamie Shackleton. But I am still looking for that sort of player, centre midfielder that is mainly defence-minded, but is still decent on the ball. Campos stepping in there. I'm intrigued to see, oh wow, what a start this could be. Adebayejo, not to be caught, I don't think. Alioski's coming towards me, but he's not there quick enough. And Victor Adebayejo, as he did last year, scores our first goal of the championship season. Shackleton with the throwback there to Benito. Inside, Franson. Lost that towards the back post. Could be kept in play. Sorescu with the effort. Tight angle to shoot from. Decided to go for it anyway. Hits the outside the post. And our lead stays intact for now. Well, that was very close indeed. Alioski. Back there to Benito. Forward to Shackleton. Alioski inside again to Shackleton. He's got options. And Schofield holds on to that. Well, I didn't see Sorescu there when I threw that initially or committed to throwing it. And Oh, they've gotten it back. And Franson finds Rudy Daz. Oh, Rudy Az. And it's very well blocked. By the defender. I would like some more growth out of Nathan Collins and uh, Cano this season, to be honest. If we're to be... Oh, that's awful from Jamie Shackleton. If we're to be genuine promotion contenders and then be able to stay up next season, I am going to need my centre-backs to be slightly higher rated. Although, their overall rating hasn't necessarily depicted their capability on the field, has it? Oh, Leeds are playing such a high line. And again, we're in behind them. One at the beginning of the half. One at the end of the half. And rolls, buries it. And an almost identical fashion. Cambridge 2, Leeds United 0. Rolls scored against Leeds on the last day. He scored against Leeds on the first day. It's going to be three points, I hope, barring a second half. 
Collapse. Three points again for Cambridge United. Clark. Back to Palomino. Rolls across to Palomino again. Good acceleration from him. Finding Adebayo. Good turn. Looking for a Kareke. Get there, get there, get there, get there. Oh, can't quite. So rescue hacks away. Okereke is by far our best player now. And I like the idea of having that one marquee man that is just the leading light of a team. You see a number of teams that get promoted from the championship have that one standout player, whether that be a striker or someone elsewhere. Get there, get there. Oh, but I'm hoping Okereke can be that player for us. Although there's no reason why any of the other players in our team couldn't also offer that leading light. Adebayo, we thought, wasn't cut out for championship level halfway through last season. And he's found his form again, so I'm delighted with that. But I really don't think he's going to cut it at Premier League level. And we'll need players of Okereke's talent and rating, most importantly, to be able to stand the chance of competing towards the top end of the, the Premier League table. I expect when we get up, because I imagine we'll get up at some point in this save, when we get up to the Premier League, it will probably be similar to our first season in the Championship and our second season in League Two, where the AI are really strong against us in the first half of the season, and then in the second half of the season, their performances tail off. It's just a pattern in career mode. A lot of you guys have uh, noted something similar in your own saves. Wow, what a goal that would have been. Thankfully, saved comfortably by Schofield, who is actually under scrutiny at the minute for those mistakes towards the end of the last season that cost us points and cost us goals. Arguably, it was me that cost us promotion by making a mistake to give Brentford a goal, but... The keeper made a mistake to give Brentford a goal as well, so we'll both shoulder 50% of the blame, I think. 20 minutes to go here, though, at Ellen Road. And we have still that 2-0 lead, and they don't look too likely in getting themselves anything out of this lead, although they've got the corner to come in now. I'll take Palomino off, and we'll bring Tate on and see what he's like in that central defensive midfield role. Bring Rock on as well for Noyle, who's starting to tire. And outside of that, I'm quite happy to uh, continue forward with the players that are on the field. See what happens here from this corner. Donis to deliver it. Lindsay is on for Barber. Tate underneath that, and his first touch is a good defensive clearing header. Donis to Lindsay. Good block by Cano, and that's going to be hacked wide by Lindsay. Free kick taken short. Out wide there to Jack. Inside to Campos. Oh, Okereke was there waiting for the pass. I just didn't get it to him in time. Shackleton across here to Campos. Sorry, to Campos. To Plastu, to Benito. Campos is the man trying to chase them down. It's literally, just in this moment, via train of thought, occurred to me that maybe we should just, if we can't sell him, we should just use Julian and Goya as my winger for in that rotation 11. And keep Charlie Robinson or send Charlie Robinson out on loan and just keep Julian and Goy for one more year on that left hand side. That's certainly an option we could utilise. Maybe I'll do that. I think I'll do that. Oh. Uh, put the team first. James Warden isn't getting as much first team football as he would want, but uh, we also, I say we always prefer for the worst, but I felt confident in that game against Leeds. We can do even better, certainly. Although a 2 0 win away from OM Road is not to be snubbed. And, well, considering we're the only team to have played, the only teams to have played our games, Cambridge United, top of the championship for the first time ever in this save. Although, I imagine, not for long. Nope, we're down to third. But still, third place is decent. Certainly some options to push... Oh, I simulate just the one. Some options to push forward. Right, now let me go... I'm going to do that. I'm going to go and put Charlie Robinson on the loan list. And I'm going to start and Goy on the left-hand side of this team. Where are you, Julian? There you are. And we'll send Charlie Robinson out on loan. Let me go and do that now. And hopefully the extra experience for Charlie Robinson will ensure that his potential grows. We can play the game against Bournemouth next week with a full strength side. And immediately 
a loan offer for Charlie Robinson. Although I'd rather he got experience, like you see Salford with a side that came in from before. I'd rather I'd rather he played in England. Ah, oh, good. Glad we're aligned, Charlie. He's obviously keen on the loan idea as well. Uh, training injury. Nine days for Campos. A loan offer for Ngoy. Sorry. Right, let me go and take Julian Ngoy off the transfer list now. I'm sure some of you will be pleased to have Ngoy stay. It said loan there on the left, but these guys are definitely on the transfer list, not the loan list. They just It just says loan because loan was the sort of bid that came in for them. Hopefully we still get transfer bids in for some of those players. Got scout reports finally coming back on some of those other um, pre-con... Pre-con, I keep saying that. Free agents. But obviously I decided or investigated and discovered that they weren't good enough. Uh, don't want to be eventual, Matt. Don't make me regret it, Julian. I'm sure he won't. He's actually grown. To be fair, one of the reasons I decided to sell him was that he hadn't grown. And he's up one to... Uh, He's up one now to 70 rated, so maybe we are starting to see some growth through him. I want bids from English clubs, please. I wish I'd have just accepted that Salford one now. Uh, Ray Loviedo coming for James Wilden, but I know he's unhappy at the amount of first team football he's seeing at the minute, but in fact, uh, oh, thank you for the international manager's job at India. I'm sorry, I don't want that. What I could do. Because I play, I play him in the midfield in this rotation level at the minute to give Pereira Rock a starting position at right back. Because Palomino isn't that well suited to um, defensive football, what I could do is play James Wilden in that role. Because he's obviously suited to defensive football because he's a right back but has decent passing stats as well. And he's got good physicals. James Wilding could prove to be a very, very handy player to have available in the squad. More so than he has done ever before. Right, Bournemouth will travel to us now. They could play in their home kit, I guess. Uh, Palomino's been thrown in there on the right-hand side. No, we'll give Evans the start, thank you. I've got a wipe from Palomino there. Well, we've clearly got um, other wingers in that right mid position. That's strange. Right, Evans gets his first team spot for the time being. And time to go and play our first game at our new ground for the very first time Cambridge United will set foot out on the pitch at the new Abbey Stadium. Right, what does Bournemouth's lineup look like now they're back in the championship? Ramsdale in goal. Kingsley, he's away at right back. Hello, the man from the FC Köln series that was very, very good for us on the right-hand side of defence. Mepham's still at centre-back. Callum Wilson's still at striker. They've got Marusic on the right-hand side. Isaac Hayden in midfield too. So. Fairly defensive lineup, but I don't know how competitive we'll be against Bournemouth. I'm expecting Callum Wilson to uh, to be a thorn in my side, but with them setting up the way they have, I'm not sure if they'll actually offer that much threat. They obviously got relegated last year, so they weren't good enough for the Premier League, but are they good enough? to challenge at the top end of the championship the following season. And Aviejo flashes his shot over the top of the bar to start the game. Wilson drops his shoulder nicely. Oh, and drops his shoulder again. Callum Wilson into Claude Maurice. Back to Callum Wilson. Oh, Cano. What a block. Wow. He's thrown himself that. I was in control of Kyle Noyle. I tell you what, Cano makes a number of really good blocks. I don't, I don't know as I've ever seen anyone actually acknowledge that in the comments section, but he does make a hell of a lot of uh, shot blocks for me, Cano. And it's another example of one of those players that their overall rating isn't that high, but their impact in the team is very, very good. Wilson. I love that. Collins does well. Noyle just worked that centrally there to Rolls, who spun nicely. Back to Cano. And out wide to Wilson. Down the line to Ethan Clark. Options in the middle. We'll cross early. Ah, and that turns out, unfortunately, to have been a mistake. Just going to try and whip that towards OK Reke at the back post. But it hasn't quite worked out for me. Putting Kingsley, he's away under pressure, though. But we know he's quick because we've used him in a previous save at a different club. 
I, I contemplated signing him on FM as well when I was at Ipswich in the Championship, but we didn't go for it in the end. Okereke, I, he's someone I would be open to using, perhaps in a, a save next year on 21 as well. As Oh, pen going to be given. As we mentioned, maybe using Jamie Shackleton in another save next year. Kingsley Heesbury is probably one of my favourites from the Curl series as well. But Centelles has given us a penalty here. Adebayeto with it, another shot, and I don't think that's a pen, really. That's a harsh decision. He looks a little bit like Kyle Walker there. It's a harsh decision, or Kyle Walker's FIFA model anyway. But Jack Rolls will take the penalty. He scored against Leeds from the spot towards the end of last season. He's buried that as well. Jack Rolls is scoring more pens for me than anyone else has in this save. And we lead at home against Bournemouth. Let history note, as it did last season, for Adebayeto scoring the first goal of the new season of the Championship. And Adebayeto scoring the first goal of our new ground at Carroll Road. And Adebayeto scoring the first goal of our championship season this year, let it be known that Jack Rolls was the first player to score a goal at our new stadium that is ours. The new Abbey has a hero. Jack Rolls, 1-0 Cambridge. Forward to Wilden, around the corner. OK, Reike. Evans rather reluctant to make any movement there, but we'll get that out to Rolls. And I'll look through that channel for Adebayeto. Can he get there ahead of the keeper? No, he can't, if anything. It's just left some stud marks on the inside of Ramsdale's thighs. Not the best of attempts to get there, but not the best of clearances from the keeper either, nor touches from Jack Rolls. Never mind. We shall stay 1-0 up for now, but delighted with the way that we've started this championship season so far, a game and a half in. I hope I still feel the same come the end of this second game. Marusi is causing me problems, though. And Ehezebue driving inside from right back. Quick double step over. I wasn't expecting that turn back. And he's a great... Oh, he's kicked that straight against Wilson. He has the follow-up, but he scuffed it wide. 1-0 up at half-time. Hayden. Forward there to Wilson. Inside to De La Cruz. Nice tackle by Cano. Clark across to Evans. Forward there to Egereke. That's well done. Adebiezo looking for Jack Ross. Oh, Chris Mepham does well to read that and cut it out. They had a lot of possession there. As you can see, Bournemouth. 60-40 in their favour. He's a way rushing through. I shouldn't have dived in with a challenge there. But they haven't yet caused me too much problem since that opening chance. And oh, Timo Werner has gone to Juventus from Real Madrid. In fact, I'll show you, actually. Oh, well done, Kyle. He's just rushed in and on that back. I'll show you after this game what the... Why would you do that? I'll show you what the, the transfers that have gone through so far in this window are. There are a couple of big ones. Timo Werner being one of them to Juventus from Real Madrid. Win that header, please. Kyle Noel's done well. Get to that, please, Evans. He hasn't been able to. Centelles to Claude Maurice. To Centelles again. Or Maurice again. Oh, he's done Evans there with a lovely drop of the shoulder. Oh, this is good football from Bournemouth. Really good football. Will he... Oh, did he touch that? It didn't even look like Wilson touched that. It was almost him going for it that put the keeper off. I want to see a replay. It looked like he didn't touch it. It's good football from Bournemouth. Back there, worked around, and then inside. First time lofted cross, and... Well, I'm still not sure after seeing a replay. Give me a second eighth replay. Did he touch this? I still don't know. He must have done, because he's given him the goal, but it didn't look like he touched it. Oh, Callum Wilson has equalised for Bournemouth in the 65th minute, and they are level here at the New Abbey. Nice ball by Wilson. Noel's done well to intervene. And Schofield will lift that looking for Clark. Didn't nod that down well enough. Mauritius. Oh, nicely done. Cano. There's another block. That one I instigated rather than him doing it of his own accord, but still, brilliant stop. By Cano. Palomino has come on in that cam roll now for Jack Rolls as he was getting tired. Can we get to that loose ball? We can't. Centelles knocks it to a Hezebre. And if any side is going to win this game at the minute, it looks like it's going to be Bournemouth. Evans out to Wilden though. Maybe something on the counter attack. Okareke played in. Try and switch this out to Clark. It's done that very well indeed. Inside with Clark to Palomino. And there's Wilden. Out wide is Evans. Wilden going again. Get that to. And be Asia. Oh, can't turn. And Okereke was making a great run. Marisic, oh, hello. Fancy little flick. Still not sure who's going to win this game, if any. We seem 
like we're going to draw it, but both sides have been threatening to go and score a second goal. And it could yet be Bournemouth. Claude Maurice in the box. Cano trying to be in the way. Oh, he's in the way again. Esteban Cano out wide there to... Is it, no, it's Eusebio Cano, isn't it? Not Esteban. I'm thinking Esteban Cambiasso. Eusebio Cano. Sorry, Tez wide from the corner. And it's a point apiece. Yet to find our first win at our new ground. But a draw against the recently relegated Premier League side is not to be sniffed at. Or snubbed. Or not to turn your nose up at. Not sure what the exact expression is that I'm looking for there. But we get a point from Bournemouth is one thing we know for sure. Always going to be a tough fixer as well. But both teams played well. And we certainly deserved the point that we got even if they dominated possession. And the chances the draw was deserved. Absolutely. And Claude Morris played well but... Callum Wilson was the one that supposedly got the goal. A loan off of Robinson. Please be from an English side. Spezia. No, why? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Please. S let me send him somewhere where he's going to have a decent quality of team teammate and a decent quality of opposition as well so he can get some really good experience. Pereira Rock getting closer to that 69 rating. Cano up to 72 so far this season. I think that's growth from him this year. That was 71, wasn't it, at the end of last season? Wilson's already up one. Collins is up one. Cano is not, unfortunately. But nice to see some growth from Collins at the start. Fitzwater's up one as well. Uh, Pereira Rock is up one too. Evans and Campos also growing. Julian Ngoy up one to 70 as well. And up next for us is this game against Grimsby in the Carabao Cup, which we will simulate with the rotation 11. And hope to have a positive result. Greg Taylor wants to play in this one. I'm sorry, Greggy. Uh, I'll consider it, is what I'll say. But I don't want to say anything negative to him. But like, you're not in charge. Like, that's harsh. It's Greg Taylor. Can't be mean to Greg Taylor, can we? Cambridge versus Grimsby. A game that we should certainly be winning. I'd be fairly confident of winning Cambridge versus Grimsby in real life, let alone by this point in this save. Julian Ngoy from the left-hand side has gotten himself a goal to give us a 1-0 lead. Andy Hessenthaler has gotten sent off and Abadia adds a second. We're going through to the next round of the Carabao Cup. And we shall start tomorrow's episode. Julian Ngoy adds a third, knowing that we've had a, a really positive start to this season. A win in the Cup, a win and a draw in the league. We sit fifth in the table for now, which is where we finished last year. A loan offer for Robinson from Cadiz this time. Getting better with regards to the level of opponent or level of potential uh, loan team, but not yet. Not any of those. Right. Blackburn up next for us. They were threatened with relegation last year, so I don't expect them to be too much of an issue to brush aside. I may actually sim this one as well, thinking about it, because we're only going to play two games tomorrow. We've got Bristol City there midweek. Uh, and Blackburn are a side that we really should be beating. So we'll sim this Blackburn one now. We'll play Bristol City, uh, Derby and Swansea tomorrow and sim that one against Rotherham as well. So let me go and simulate this game with the first 11. And then we'll start tomorrow's episode by playing with the rotation 11. That game against Bristol City midweek. They lost to Leeds recently, Blackburn. So I would be confident of getting victory here then. If they can't beat a team that we've already beaten this season, then then surely, by logic, we should win this. But Rothwell has given them a 1-0 lead in the 34th minute, and it doesn't look like we are going to get anything from this one. Buckley's added a second. We're going to lose away from home against Blackburn. Well, maybe that was a terrible decision, Chess, wasn't it, to sim this game? Certainly feel like we should have won that. Blackburn are not a capable side, really. They came close to going down last year, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's their first winner this season. No, it's their second. They're actually having a decent start to the year. Blackburn might well have turned things around. Right, fair play to them. I won't be I won't hold a grudge. So as we head into the next episode tomorrow, your transfer suggestions are required for a defence minded defence minded central midfielder, please, for this team. Outside of that, I'm happy with the way that the squad looks right now. But one defence-minded midfielder to come into the team. We have 23 million to spend. And the way things have been going, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to raise any more. No bids for Lewis Price yet. So, 
he's the main player that we're going to be able to race some funds with. So I'm not sure if we're going to have much more than that 23 mil. Uh, the biggest transfer dealing so far in this window, Julian Brandt to Liverpool for 76.1. That's the transfer that's happened in my FM save as well. Timo Werner, as we heard, Real Madrid to Juventus, 112.3 million. And Usem Awa, or Husim Awa, to Bayern Munich for 112.6 million pounds from Real Madrid. So I'm waiting to see what Real Madrid do with that £225 million boost to their budget. Not sure what will happen, who they'll go for, but they need to sign a striker and a, a winger. A loan offer here from uh, Sporting Hijo for Clark, but he's not going anywhere. Sorry, Real Sporting. Right, so we shall start tomorrow then with Bristol City. But I'm not going to record that episode until you've seen this one. I'm probably going to be live on Twitch as you see this as well. So if you've enjoyed the episode, drop the video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Come and join me on Twitch. Uh, no spoilers in the chat though, please. But of course, feel free to come across and join me. And then I will see you tomorrow, if not, in the second episode of this fifth season of the RTG. And hopefully we can get that new central midfielder. I'll see you tomorrow.